There's a man out there who has done just about everything that can be imagined in motorsport. He's a Formula One champion. He's won in virtually every discipline of racing. But he also happens to be a devoted and world-renowned collector of model cars. The man, of course, is Mr. Mario Andretti. Thank you, Mr. Andretti, for taking some time with My us pleasure. today. You've got a nice little collection here, and it's only a, a part of your greater collection. And each of these cars means something from your career as a race driver. But each of these also represent different types of models, different level of detail. And, I mean, each of these are just absolutely beautiful. Which, which among these, which type of models are your favorites? Well, first of all, obviously, you touched on the fact that, uh, yeah, each one has a particular meeting. Uh, Meaning, I should say, um, I, I drove uh, statistically uh, 166 different different race cars in my career. Wow. Now, uh, the majority of those somewhere are represented in some scale or other uh, in, as a diecast model. Uh, these are just a few that, um, again, I, have, uh, I can talk about. Uh, for instance, uh, this. Uh, Capco Sprint car. Right. Uh, this is um, uh, very uh, meaningful to me, mainly because uh, it was a great springboard mm -hmm. in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, at the level that I uh, was at the time, the next level was the Indy cars, which would take us to that white right roadster. Uh, and uh, the reason this was important is because uh, when the Sprint cars in the uh, mid 60s, Mm -hmm. um, you'll be you'll be racing against uh, the top guys in uh, in in the Indy cars like uh, you know AJ Foyt, um, Branson, McCluskey, right, right. and on and on. So if you did well there, which you know I won a few races, uh, then of course they uh, will earn you you know the next you level, which is up, this right? is the maximum level. So and you go on and on. I mean, uh, uh, get into Formula One just to jump around. Uh, this is a Ferrari that uh, I won my very first Formula One race. 312 team? Yes, yes in, mm -hmm. in South Africa. Um, this uh, dirt car is, um, is what won, I won the dirt car championship in uh, 1973. Uh, it's got a very powerful uh, double overhead cam Ford engine. Right, right. Uh, this this was really a great car. And what's also meaningful is that this was uh, the first of this type of cars with a cage. Yeah, a protective cage. A or protective head, cage. Sure. You can see it was not there. Um, let's see. This uh, Ford. This is a uh, Mark Mark IV. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this I drove a Le Mans. But uh, there's a yellow version of exactly the same car, which I won uh, the 12 hours of Sebring with. Right, right, right. Uh, and the detail on this is unbelievable, as you can see in and out. Uh, well, that's the thing. You saw these cars firsthand. You yes. had hands-on with these machines. So you get a model from a manufacturer, you've worked with them in the development process, and then you see the finished result. That's got to be. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's really what's fun. Uh, I know some of the particulars, and I say, oh, yeah, they captured that, they captured that. So, um, you know, it's really amazing what goes into these things. Um, and, and it's great to see because, uh, uh, again, all of a sudden, when you see all these details, it becomes a very valuable and interesting piece, you know. And, and well, it preserves can, the history. Yeah, of course it does. Now, how um, important is that to you? I mean, aside from your legacy, which will go on forever, the fact that models represent automotive history, that, that they have to be correct, that they have to be what they need to be to keep that history alive. Is that very important to you? Do you see that? Oh, absolutely. Way? Indeed. I mean, uh, uh, let's face it, I think it's the integrity uh, mm -hmm. of the sport that's really represented here. could see when the detail is uh, expressed yeah. then you know that uh, the individuals or the companies that are part of this uh, they want to uh, be correct mm -hmm. in every way and uh, and express it and show it uh, to the ones that have been there like myself right. you know to uh, to say you know this is a valuable interesting piece and 
and um, and and again, uh, so it it it, it produces. Uh, I think it creates the integrity you right, know, of the right. business. To be honest with you, um, we go like to the number six, which was uh, uh, my very last Indy car that I drove a Laguna Seca in uh, 1993, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have uh, the actual the full-size car in my garage. You just saw that. That's and, amazing. You know, some of these <laughs> models we can go into all the details, decals, and all everything, and yeah. uh, and you find it. So as you can see, um, you yeah. know, it just uh, repeats itself. You know, and, and what I said, uh, I have the my. This is really a small, That's a but I mean, beautiful hand built actually. Yeah, this is hand built, and, That's um, and here again, yeah, it, it's it's awesome. This is my world championship uh, Lotus uh, Lotus seventy nine in nineteen seventy eight. Uh, this is a honker. This is a uh, honker. Yeah. This is the worst race car I've ever driven. <laughs> uh, and and they even missed something on this one. Uh, should have had Paul Newman written on in front here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a Ford effort um, back in 1967, I think. Um, and um, and actually, I have a photo with uh, Paul Newman sitting in it. Hmm. Um, and but to my surprise, uh, the morning of the race, all of a sudden I see Paul Newman uh, written. Uh, in front of uh, the car here, mm -hmm. and I was you know, very nervous. It's Paul Newman, and uh, all of a sudden, there he is, he and Joanne <laughs> Woodward. And Ford des he decided to just put his name on there because they invited him to the race. And this right. was really uh, his introduction to our sport. This is what and got him started. This is what got him basically wow. started and interested. Um, it was about a year later where they did the movie uh, in the, uh, um, Winning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Winning, mm -hmm. uh, all about Indianapolis, uh, you know, the story there. And, and then, of course, uh, you know, his interest was sparked even further where uh, he, uh, he went for a, a national license uh, in the SCCA and, uh, and he became uh, several times amateur driving champion. Right. Very right. serious about it. And I latched on to him uh, back in the early 80s uh, uh, to, uh, and he, he was already um, a team owner of uh, the Can one of the can -Am series cars. Right, right. And uh, lured him into the Indy cars. He picked up his, his uh, uh, big nemesis, uh, Carl Haas. It was and a very, racing. yeah, it was a very unlikely uh, relationship and partnership, but it turned out to be a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the amazing part is that uh, with Paul Newman, um, uh, I spent uh, the longest stint in my career with that team, which mm -hmm. was uh, uh, 12 years. Uh, and it's you know it was phenomenal. We had uh, cha national championship, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, won 18 IndyCar races with them. Uh, so again, uh, like I said, you can go around and uh, every piece has a little bit of history or story or some That's anecdote, it. you know. I mean, you're, you're the ultimate authority on these models, and you, you are working, right now you're working with uh, True Scale Miniatures to do a, a series of cars uh, in their signature series. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the process? How does Mario Andretti factor into that more than, I mean, you obviously make sure that the, mechanically the car is where it needs to be, but... I, uh, quite honestly, uh, I rely a lot on the, on the industry to do their homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's up to them to do the proper due diligence, and it's available. The details Absolutely. are available, sure. and uh, the credibility goes with uh, with the company. Uh, if they uh, don't really uh, replicate or represent it properly, uh, they lose that credibility with me. You know, and uh, I don't have to get that involved because uh, you know I'm not an expert in this sort of thing, but. I know what I see, yeah, and I appreciate what I see, or or I don't. What you don't see, sure. You know, and uh, so basically, uh, you know, I can't take any credit for any of that, but uh, um, I'll say one thing: I, I do enjoy usually the finished product, and and the industry has done an incredible job. Quite honestly, uh, you know, they get my vote. <laughs> It's a beautiful piece. We're seeing everything here from Carousel 1 to some of the uh, 
exoto pieces, it's scratch built, hand built, it's, it's almost never ending and the details are just, uh, just amazing. What do you look for? What, what really floats your boat when you see a model? What pulls you in? What has to be there for you? Uh, uh, uh. I think each model, like I said, is uh, the, the, the talk about the scale and so forth. Uh, and sometimes I'm intrigued even by a smaller scale, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. it's more difficult to really uh, get to the right. details, you know. But, um, you know, I, I'll repeat myself. Uh, what intrigues me is the, you know, details, just the right. small details. I look in the cockpit. I've been in that cockpit. <laughs> and is everything, you know, is it it's where right I there. remember, you know? Yeah. And most of the time, I mean, the majority of everything is there. And here's the checkered flag for Mario Andretti, winner of the 1969 500-mile race. I wanted to win this race so bad that you can't believe it. And uh, uh, I can't, I still can't believe it's true. I'm just, uh, I'm going to have to be pinching myself all so, night. Uh, uh, that's really what uh, impresses me, uh, and many times uh, uh, the function of suspension, uh, right, working you know, features. the working features that, that they have. Uh, I mean, look at this car here with all uh, the doors and everything, and uh, you can take the wheels off and yeah, you the can. steering works and all of that. So, again, as delicate as that is, right. it's functional, and yeah. and those are the things that. When somebody said, "Look at this," you know, and that's what what you can impress them with. Yeah, but actually gets that deep. It's it's just it's so great of you to take the time for us today to talk about this because so many people don't realize that a lot of real car guys are also very much into the scale models. And um, what started you? I mean, you have been around the world several times over. You're one of the busiest men in the automotive industry. When do you find the time to collect? How do you actually get Well, uh, yeah, that, this is something was like a, a process that came about. Uh, you know, I was there at the very beginning of this industry. Right. And, uh, and, of course, the merchandising became uh, very popular, mm -hmm. you know, at all the events. And, uh, and that's what we used to have. We used to have our merchandise trailer you, uh, appearing at all the races and right. and um, the attraction was to have always the latest and greatest of models available um, and and uh, and that's really how my interest peaked if you mm -hmm. will uh, just by seeing what's out there uh, I was not aware oh, okay this and that is available and mm -hmm. then I had uh, uh, my brother-in-law that um, uh, was handling this area and he was really a detailed type of guy and he knew, uh, you know, every, you know, uh, every company that, uh, you know, that would, would do this sort of thing and, mm -hmm. and uh, he would explore and, and, um, and we would get a, you know, a sample of everything that's out right. there right. And, and, you know, so that, that's how really, uh, that's how I got going and, um, and we have, you know, a warehouse full of these things, um, you know, and and, uh, and again, some were f just for me, just to have around, and others, you know, they're actually being sold, you know. Right, and right. This is a, this was very uh, interesting part of that, actually. Of all the cars that you drove that have had models made of them, what what's the missing link? What car do you want to see made that hasn't been done yet? Uh... They did them all. <laughs> they really covered it. it was, right, uh, right. There's no car that uh, had any meaning in my career that was not uh, represented. So It's all been done. It's all been I, covered. Yeah. I, my bucket list is pretty complete here. <laughs> not, not for many years. Not for many years. I want to thank you so much for everything that you've done for not just the automobiles, but for the automotive hobby, for the model car hobby, and... Keep it up. It, it's an honor and a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this has been my life. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Andretti. Thank you.